All right, guys, today we're going to be reacting to how the German military will become Europe's most powerful. I have to see that to believe it. Yeah, I know that it's done. Post-World War II, Germany hasn't really dedicated that much to the military um, area. But we're going to see why they're going to become the most powerful. Let's jump in. Let's see what's going on. Hey, make sure you like, this, subscribe, and share my content, huh? Let's go. Is not in the way you might expect. For years, the same countries have stood atop the index for Europe's strongest military powers. With eight military satellites in orbit, 13 naval frigates, eight submarines, and 850 aircraft, Italy consistently ranks high on the list. Hmm. France is no walkover either, with 300 nuclear weapons in its arsenal, and Damn. an aircraft carrier, three helo carriers, and 10 military bases from which it can project one of the world's best counterterrorism strike forces into the corners of the globe, there is reason to believe France will remain one of the preeminent European powers for years to come. Then there's the UK, consistently viewed as one of the world's strongest military powers not just in Europe. It possesses 25 overseas military bases, two aircraft carriers, 10 excellent nuclear submarines, and 663 aircraft. Even if its reserves of tanks, of which it only has 227, and artillery 215, remain comparatively low. In a few years, these rankings might be all about to change. Finland and Sweden, NATO's newest members, look poised to play a central role in European deterrence measures against Putin's Russia and are Ooh, this is interesting. Mm, this is interesting. preparing accordingly. The countries along NATO's Eastern European flank, from the Baltics down to the Black Sea, have long maintained... So these two countries are not part of the uh, NATO, right? These two? Uh, we have Russia here, then we have Ukraine here happening, right? But then we have some of the independence well whatever crimea area right i'm not, i'm not familiar with the area i'm just saying contained respectable Belarus. response forces as part of a robust collective military presence poland too is committed to flexing its own military muscle for several years now it's been steadily replacing its soviet stockpile with modern western weapon systems and munitions in a bid to become europe's strongest land army by 2026. Wow. it has an ongoing deal to acquire almost 500 HIMARS long-range missile systems has been steadily integrating the latest us m1a21 sep version 3 abrams tanks apache helicopters and f-35s it's also branched out, importing the latest in South Korean armor and artillery, whose global reputation is growing. And then there's Germany. Yes, the European country which for decades now has routinely fallen well short of its defense goals, now seems eager to jump to the top of Europe's military spending leaderboards. Okay. It may seem like a shock, but last year German politicians finally read the room and realized that with one of the world's largest GDPs, it was high time to pull its weight in NATO and revamp its armed forces. Indeed, the war in Ukraine seems like it has cast everything. So, but for them, it will be more like a National Guard, right? It would not be a, like, a, like a military. Um, it would be like a National Guard. Am I wrong on that? Let me know in the comment section into the proper perspective. Today, Germany is not only gearing up to overhaul its armed forces, it wants to do so by becoming the world's third largest military spender. I'm sure none of you had that on your bingo card a year or two ago. Nope. It's been some time since German leaders expressed this desire. Naturally, it's worth following up to see how bad things had actually gotten in the German armed forces, wow. how the military overhaul is currently going, and whether Germany will be able to keep on track to achieve its lofty military goals in the near and long-term future. Prior to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it was fair to say that the reputation of what, on paper, should undeniably be one of Europe's most feared militaries was poor, to put it mildly. At the tail end of the 2010s, reports began to emerge documenting the unexpected devolution of one of the fiercest and most brutal fighting forces on Earth into what one observer likened to a glorified volunteer fire department, one whose venerated mountain troops were routinely deployed to shovel snow from roofs in Bavaria rather than conduct cutting-edge military exercises. What went wrong for the once vaunted Bundeswehr? Well, a lot, actually. So much that it's sort of hard to know where to begin. Mm. Like most things, Germany's current situation didn't unfold in a vacuum. The problems trace back to the end of the Cold War, a period of renewed hope and opportunity for the German people. The fall of the Berlin Wall, the reintegration of East and West Germany, and the collapse of the USSR as a regional military rival changed Germany's security outlook virtually overnight. 
Suddenly, money the German parliament had funneled into military expenditures had better use revamping the country's economic... Isn't that funny, man, that this is part of Russia? Isn't that funny, right? Like, look how far it is, man. Like, you have to really do a huge left turn here just to get here or here. You have to go through all this. That's funny. ...political and social institutions. There was simply no proximate military threat worthy enough to merit continued military spending at Cold War levels. Knowing that NATO and, more importantly, the United States could collectively guarantee Europe's long-term security, the country and its people, still struggling through the memories of two world wars, felt like it could afford to draw down its military capabilities without imperiling its overall safety. This process started in the early 1990s. Few realized at the time that it would continue practically unabated until 2022. This, then, is the root of Germany's modern military weakness. Germany's decision to focus inward propelled it to incredibly prosperous economic heights. Yet this choice came at the expense of a significant chunk of its military funding. Mm. The result has been endemic shortages of manpower and materiel. By late 2018, Germany could boast 68 Tiger attack helicopters, yet just 20% of them could fly. Huh. It had plenty of Eurofighters, 136 in all, but only 30% of those were airworthy. The state of the German Air Force got so bad that its pilots started to quit in droves. Really? On top of that, Germany's aging tornado fighters... Really? Knowing that the Germans has one of the best, uh, you know, minds when it comes down to engineering. That's interesting. I'm sorry. Just to show you, I know, I know, I know, I know clearly Germany didn't want to have nothing to, with, to do with military... Uh, talking points, but it has to come to a time that you need to get your hands dirty as well because then you're going to lose a lot of experience. Imagine, imagine generations without experience, and then all of a sudden you have a war. How do you get that experience, right? The country's only How aerial pass platform on that, that can carry its nuclear warheads were scheduled to be decommissioned. The state of military disrepair extended to the infantry, who, according to reports, has suffered from shortages of everything from ammunition to underwear of late. As of 2019, the main battle rifle of the German armed forces, the Heckler & Koch G36, was in the process of being scrapped after studies revealed serious defects in its accuracy. In other ah. words, that the gun misses its target if it's too hot. In a really? visit to a Lithuanian outpost where 450 German soldiers were stationed as part of a NATO mission to protect Europe's eastern flank, American officials were dismayed to discover Bundeswehr personnel communicating on unsecure mobile phones due to a shortage of secure radio equipment. Wow, equipment really? deficiencies and short by increased recruiting difficulties. Germany's really? recent goal to raise its recruitment thresholds by 20,000 troops founded as many of its potential enlistees. Isn't that something, huh? No, Germany need you guys need your own military, man. You, I don't know, if, you know, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but. If it happens, now you guys need to defend yourself. How, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Seems like list, enlisting has been a problem, huh? Discovered the pitiful living conditions at its military barracks. And I, I must say, not only in Germany, we have a problem, in, a problem enlisting as well. It's a lot of bad move that the United States government has done to just inspire young people to enlist. So something's going on in the Western world. As a result, Germany has been forced to contemplate a seemingly unimaginable alternative, filling empty recruitment pools with foreign nationals. The problem it now faces is a legal one, since German law only allows those with citizenship to serve in its military. At a certain point, Germany's military shortcomings became so apparent, it led high-ranking Bundeswehr officials to declare, no matter where you look, there's dysfunction. Wow. Meanwhile, Germany's allies were likely wondering in private why the Germans only terrible at war when they're on our side. <laughs> the most vociferous of Germany's critics was the leader of the ally it could ill afford to antagonize, the United States. At the tail end of Donald Trump's four-year term as president, the mercurial American began pressuring Germany to up its defense spending and meet the suggested NATO obligation 2% of GDP. Wow. The problem was that even if Angela Merkel, the German chancellor at the time and leader of the center-right bloc of politicians most critics placed blame for decades of diminutive military spending, decided to try to effect some sort of change, it was simply impossible to overhaul the Bundeswehr overnight. This is because power stems from many overlapping variables like industrial capacity, financial and organizational strength, research and development, and political and social support. But, but, this but, 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 but
And knowing that Germany is one of the richest countries in the world, I don't see the problem. At least getting some, at least getting the foot in the door. I, I, I don't see the problem. Maybe as an outsider looking in, I don't see it. Maybe there's all the things I, I don't see that might be a, a huge obstacle. Is a battle on multiple fronts, German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen said as she tried to fend off Trump's criticism in 2019. I also wish things would move more quickly, but 25 years of shrinkage and cuts can't be reversed in just a few years. That was the goal to which Germany set itself at the dawn of the 2020s, to reverse 25 years of shrinkage and cuts. And so Germany did probably the most German thing it could. It decided to spend hundreds of millions of euros on outside consultants to try to clean up the army's mess. Mm. When their findings and recommendations were clearly failing to correct course, the German parliament took matters into their own hands, forming a special investigative committee to look into irregularities in procurement and accusations that the consultants were given sweetheart deals and too much influence. Hundreds of millions but of why, euros didn't even put But my question is, why the lady, the lady that was shown, why I'm not seeing any, any names that has to do with military experience? Like this is, I I think it has to come down to just simple, just simple reasoning. Like put somebody that knows about military, has been in the mil German military for years, and know where to go, and where to spend, where not to spend. That's my opinion. It's a dent in the GDP of arguably the world's most heavily industrialized country. Yet it did reveal perpetual mismanagement and an overall lack of strategic thinking on the best way to modernize the nation's military forces. Everything takes too long and costs too much money, remarked mm. Hans Peter Bartels, really? who between 2015 and 20 served as parliamentary commissioner for the armed forces. It's as if time and money were endless resources, and in the end, no one takes responsibility. Which begs the perennial question, why? Why, given Germany's geopolitical standing and its awareness that Russia wow. and China posed a far greater... Th wow, look at that, bro. You have, what, almost 300 million here? What, 250 million? They're here, 1.6 billion. Oh, man. When you see this kind of map, right? My bad, folks, I had to bring just a little bit of politics here, bro. You know, I like this kind of stuff, too. When you see this... What, what are you thinking? Between all the NATO countries, well, how much, how many, how many in Europe's only, right? I'm not, I'm not counting Australia, United States, or, or Canada, right here. From here all the way here. How many? Give and take, like what, 600 million? Probably, give and take. threat by Logistic the early 2020s look good. than they did a decade earlier, did it continue to sit on its hands? More German media bandwidth was focused outward on Trump's threats of withdrawing from NATO than inward on its own military potential. Germany had an intractable problem. It was at once reliant on the United States' 33,000 soldier presence and its robust nuclear umbrella for its own defense, yet extremely critical of anyone who called its NATO commitment into question. It had an intense public disdain for armed engagement logically rooted in its recent past, yet had formed strong economic, technological, and energy interdependencies with its ideological rivals. Mm. The German populace had, by all measures, been lulled into a false sense of security. Ooh. Everything changed on February 24th, 2022. Ukraine. Putin's invasion of Ukraine pulled the carpet from under the German political establishment. Concurrent with Putin's military buildup, Chancellor Olaf Scholz announced to the world's surprise that Germany would up its 1.46% defense spending and fulfill its 2% of GDP goal for the first time since 1990. Wow. Three days after Putin greenlit the first large-scale ground war in Europe since World War II, Scholz went even further than before, characterizing the moment at the Bundestag rostrum as a change of era making a commitment to reversing its decades-old minimalist defense policies in lieu of the type of sweeping overhaul befitting Germany's economic stature. The announcement was met with fanfare in Parliament. The Chancellor set aside a veritable war chest to achieve this goal, a $100 billion special fund authorized to modernize its military forces. Good. The decision was met with a 75% approval rating. Good. There have been several encouraging developments since Scholz's proclamations. 
Germany has been one of Europe's most generous suppliers of military aid to Ukraine since the start of the conflict, doling out serious arms packages from its federal armed forces that include infantry fighting vehicles, leopard main battle tanks, though they certainly dragged their feet there for months longer than they should have, mine resistant armored vehicles, iris. I mean, I don't want to think like that, but this is a good good time for Germany to test things out, right? Like, oh, let's just send these, huh? let's see how they work, let's see what can we fix. You, you, are you following? I, I don't want to think like this, but. It's a great opportunity to test run some of these equipment too, right? And that way you can just fix them and just make them better. It's just my opinion. Just my opinion, folks. T air defense systems, howitzers, munitions, drones, and smaller items like helmets, mobile antennas, night vision goggles, and logistics vehicles. The process of donating old equipment has incentivized German politicians and arms industry leaders to fill the vacuum. Yet old patterns are starting to emerge. After two decades of neglect, critics are now repeating an old complaint that Berlin still lacks an overall strategy for its defense industry. Mm. Spending 100 billion euros will not guarantee military might. While many hoped that Germany would use the money to reinvest in its own defense industry, something the United States has been outside. doing since the start of the conflict in Ukraine, Berlin has come under fire for also investing in US defense companies. In July 2023, a leading tank gearbox manufacturer claimed that nearly half of the $100 billion special fund had gone to American defense companies. Germany does not have a strategic compass for the defense industry, claimed Suzanne Vigand, chief executive of Renk Group. This is something the French are handling much better. Essentially, Vigand believed the special fund should be used for more than plugging short-term gaps in the German military's inventories, but also future. This makes a lot of sense, but a year after Schultz prom I mean, they, they have, you, Germany has a lot of things a lot of countries don't have. Access to water right here, even access to water to the, to the Russian uh, area right here. I don't know what's the name of that ocean, but they have a very good, very good areas that they can really, um, if they're very smart when it comes down to the military uh, equipment, they're in a very good strategy. See, they have access to, to, the, uh, to the west and to the east easily, right? So it's not bad. It's not bad. not bad. I think it's more about, you know, they're starting to invest in their military. It's going to take some time, right, to things start to move, right? Promise to but use a special fund. Little seems to have changed. Over the past 12 months, a flurry of reports have continued to shed light on German military unpreparedness. Strangled by bureaucracy, one headline reads. Germany's army is so under-equipped that it used broomsticks instead of machine guns, read another. What? In February 2023, a prominent foreign policy spokesman for the Christian Democratic Union told a German news outlet that the military had lost a year and is barer than it was at the start of 2022. Sure, the German Defense Ministry had placed several new orders for F-35 fighter jets, heavy transport helicopters, and a new program designed to digitize the apparently obsolescent digital communications and networking capabilities of the Bundeswehr. Interest rates on the loan Parliament took out for the 100 billion euro special fund rose from 8 billion to 13 billion euros, leaving only 87 billion euros to spend, to say nothing of inflation and value-added taxes, which looks set to strike another 15 billion euros or so from the ledger books. Mm. The longer you have this money sitting around somewhere, the longer factors like inflation and interest payments we'll mess have it up. to wear at this pile, one economist stated. Recently, however, German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius has been arguing that the 100 billion euro special fund is far from enough to meet the Bundeswehr's eye-opening needs. While he has modestly asked for budgetary increases in the realms of tens of billions of euros, likely to escape severe political and public pressure, others have estimated that to make Germany the backbone of Europe's defense, it needs to do much more. In February 2024, Pistorius argued that overturning two decades of minimal military expenditures may require Germany to surpass its 2% target, mm. which it met for the first time this year. The development of our industry all has to fit together. I mean, they have to. They have to. It, not only Germany, but a lot of European countries. I was, I was listening to one French politician say that they spent almost 40% 40, 40 of the French military in Ukraine. 40%. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy, man? We can't do this. We cannot do this, man. We have to be more serious about Ukraine. It's not a game, man. He we have to, you, you have to show Russia that you're not playing around. Like we're a good country. We, you know, we have tolerance, but do not mess with us because we're going to stop you cold.
told the German That's the Parliament, you had to say. we might reach 3%, maybe even 3.5%. It depends what's happening in the world. Yep. Germany is at a serious inflection point. In 2021, the country spent 52.8 billion euros on defense, seventh in the global rankings, certainly ahead of France, but still behind Russia and the UK. As a percentage of its GDP, among the 20 largest global economies, it came in far lower, just 15th. As Germany hits its renewed spending targets, it looks set to catapult itself higher into the rankings. Spending an annual amount of 76.1 billion euros would put it ahead of Russia, India, and the UK. It would lead the wow. EU by some distance, though it would still pale in comparison to the US and China. More importantly, increased military spending will finally enable Germany to back its rhetorical and economic leadership of the European community with cold, hard steel. In the past, Germany's allies and adversaries alike were slow to take it seriously in matters of defense. Today, this looks set to change. Germany has expressed its desire to build a modernized, high-tech, powerful military. The F-35s represent a step in the right direction, as do the future combat air systems it's developing jointly with France, its attempts to modernize its naval fleet, and its attention on changes in drone warfare. Man, that looks old. I don't know what the hell is that, but that looks old, bro. I don't know what style of this, but this looks old. But if it wants to become a true military superpower, Germany must continue to spend wisely for the foreseeable future. It must give equal weight to the tail end of the spear. And Logistic. make sure some of your, your soldiers are kind of dirty, man. Just send them to war. And just be honest, man. Beside the spending of the military, but if you don't have the experience, you're not going anywhere. Just, you're just putting money to waste. Send some of your soldiers to just do some, you know, some dirty work. I'm just being honest, I'm, you know, a dirty work meaning not bad, right, bro? When there's a conflict, the United States needs soldiers, you're close by, you say, hey, I'm going to send you some some Germans, soldiers, that way they can get some experience, they can bring it back home. I'm just being serious, folks. I don't know if that's a thing, but, you know, you want to send a couple of them to Ukraine, send them. I don't know, man, like, just give them some experience. That way, when they come back, then yes, they can identify some of these things. They can fix them. That's my opinion. It's intelligence, cyber warfare, training, and experience as it gives the tip. High-tech weapons, vehicles, and equipment. I don't know. They don't look as like, you know before, what I'm saying? Like, they don't look like, they don't look like, they don't, they're ready for war, man. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. I don't, they don't look ready, man. Germany is still getting the basics wrong. To be able to secure itself, not to mention its European and regional allies and partners, it must address what it's neglected for years. It needs to get its existing helicopters, aircrafts, and tanks operational. It needs to get the 50% of military hardware found to be dysfunctional back into working condition. Yeah. And it must find the funding and the social support to raise public respect for the German armed forces so it can overcome its chronic personnel shortages and Good material point. deficiencies. A job in the military does not have the kudos in Germany that it does elsewhere, owing to the country's wartime past, Pistorius recently claimed. This would have to change, and would require, by most accounts, a unique cultural change yeah. that amounted to more than business as usual, but with more money. Germany has a clear opportunity to prove its naysayers wrong by wholehearted- Before money spent, I'm telling you, you have to get your hands dirty, man. I would not spend that much money. I would just, okay, keep in 2%. It starts sending some of your soldiers to get dirty. They need to get dirty. They need to get some scars in their face. They need to get dirty. And just be honest, folks. Utterly picking honest. up the baton of European security. It's a moment of severe uncertainty for Europe, a time when the West could truly benefit from Germany's steadfast commitment to building a credible military with true deterrent potential. Today, American support for Ukraine is more uncertain than ever. There's a very real chance that depending on the way the American presidential election pans out in 2024, European figureheads like Germany and France will have to put their money where their mouth is. If the invasion of Ukraine reinforced the gravity of the threat at their doorsteps, dwindling American political and material support may leave them with no choice but to shoulder an increased burden of defense spending, revamp its arms production, and help Ukraine in areas where it's falling short. The Estonian Defense Ministry recently estimated that Western countries would need to invest just 0.25% of their GDP in military assistance to Ukraine God, in order to enable money, the country man. to continue defending. That's a lot of money, bro. All that money you could have just, I don't know, man. You're going to just use it to invest on your own, um, 
military. But then Ukraine, I, I, I mean, hey, 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 Ukraine is not, not done. I'm not going to say anything, man, but Ukraine, hmm, I don't know, man. Defending itself in 2024 and prepare a new counteroffensive in 2025. Europe must show that it's committed to its own defense, and Germany, as the richest European power, yep. has to stand at the front of the line. To succeed, it has had to overcome its bureaucratically encumbered procurement system, one that an expert described as suffering from a perfectionism in its regulations that often means the troops don't actually get what they need. This manifests itself in German tank crews not receiving standardized radio equipment as their NATO allies, Germany's various political coalitions at loggerheads over the degree of urgency to approach military modernization, and more. Germany can be pleased that, by and large, its penchant for perfectionism in the field of procurement has been ironed out. The arms industry has been working harder to increase capacity, namely in the creation of a new Rheinmetall munitions factory that can churn out 200,000 artillery shells a year. That's not bad. Yet this may still fall short of ideal. Damn. Germany is bad. set upon a generational task, not only to restructure, but in a first step to simply fill the gaps in the German armed forces. Germany's actions in the defense sphere since Russia's invasion, in light of its own past, have been nothing short of revolutionary. The question is, Will Schultz and Germany's coalition government be able to establish a viable modernization strategy? Send them there, man. Send a couple. Get them dirty. Send a couple soldiers to. I'm not saying, but it, it's true, man. I'm saying I'm I'm just basing basing this in these little images. They don't look strong, man. I'm telling you, uh, straight up, man. Uh, this is my opinion from from a American here. I'm just saying that they don't look strong, man. Everybody in the Western world don't look strong, but Germany, you need to step it up, man. Yeah. I will say, hold on to the spending. I will say, hold on. Get your hands dirty. Send a couple to Ukraine, right? Get them a little bit dirty, come back home, and just get that feedback, constant feedback. That's a great opportunity. Then by the time, you know, things get ready, you're ready. You know, you have that experience already built up. You're ready for it. You already know what you need, What where, where we need to invest, where we need to put money you, you see what i'm saying i don't know i don't know let me know what you guys think in the comment section below well i will really 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 love to to hear you guys opinion i'll see you in the next one